The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. Welcome to The Life You Want is Yours. This is Johanna Kern. Our show is dedicated to living, loving, and having the happiest, healthy, successful, and abundant life. Yes, we are all capable of living such life. It doesn't have to be difficult or hard to build it, of course, when we have the appropriate tools and knowledge to do so. We are giving you such tools and tips in our shows, and as usual, my husband, Patrick Kern, accompanies me today. Welcome again. We are meeting on air every week at the same time. Here is the recap of our previous shows. Johanna told us that In this show, we don't disregard anybody's preferences or beliefs. We only show you various angles and help you to expand your consciousness. This show is meant for everybody, no matter what is your background, age, gender, belief system, or lack of it. It is important to us that you will understand that. Our life is our own journey, and only we can decide which route we want to choose, what we want to experience, where we want to arrive, and in whose company. When we get used to a situation that doesn't benefit us anymore, but we have learned how to operate and survive under the circumstances, such situation becomes our habitual safety. It means that we got stuck in our subconscious fears. Remember, you are worth living the most wonderful life. We don't need to be stuck in a stream of circumstances and perpetuate what's no longer satisfying. Contrary to some beliefs, our destiny is not a fixed thing. It doesn't take hard work or struggle to change what we want. We also learned how we create our reality with our thoughts. According to recent developments in science, the structure of the universe, with all its laws and forces, implies that intelligence existed prior to matter, and only because people identify with their body, they believe that when their body perishes, their consciousness will too. We already know from Einstein, Tesla, and other scientists, such as Peter Higgs and Francois Englert, who received the Nobel Prize in 2013, that everything that exists is simply energy. What does it mean? It means that everything that is material, measurable by our senses, and all that we can only perceive, our thoughts, emotions, or electrons, being a part of one huge energy field, vibrates. And although nobody has ever seen or weighed an electron, just as nobody has seen or weighed an emotion or a thought, they all behave in the same way, affect how we function, how we progress, and live our life. Our thoughts vibrate just as radio waves, and just like with radio waves, our thoughts are being sent out to reach, well, whatever they can reach. And what they can reach depends on the frequency of their vibrations, and that decides how our thinking affects the reality, or rather, the illusion of reality, that we create and co-create whether we are aware of it or not. And we compare the latest discoveries in science with what some of the many philosophical, religious beliefs have been saying. While science talks about everything being a part of one huge energy field, many belief systems talk about God being all there is and containing everything within. No matter whether it is science or a belief system that resonates the most with our own inner truth, some things remain the same. We are all part of one whole, 
and we are all connected. Our awareness depends on how we let ourselves progress as the consciousness that we are. It is all up to us. We decide who we are and who we want to become. We are the consciousness that experiences itself through our life and has a choice to progress or not. Consciousness is what it is, a vibration, a current, a signal. Not long ago, the medical field talked about consciousness as being related to our senses. There is even an existing term we use when someone faints. We say then that the person is unconscious. However, now, as we can see, we need to make a difference between the consciousness of our senses and the consciousness that we are beyond our senses, not being limited to our body. And that is the consciousness we talk about during our shows. We also talked about our subconscious programming. According to science, our subconscious rules 90% of our thinking and behavior. It is responsible for our habits, emotions, automatic reactions, defensive mechanisms, etc. Remember, the subconscious programming which may keep you stuck in unwanted situations in life can be changed to whatever you want it to be. There are tools helping you to do so and we share them with you during our shows. You and only you decide what you want and what you don't want. It is your birth-given right to live the happiest, healthy, successful and abundant life. And it doesn't have to be difficult or hard to change things and make them the way you want them to be. It can be done. As a matter of fact, it has been done by many others that you might admire and even envy their successful and happy lives. And now it is your turn to live the life you want. Johanna also told us that When we are walking toward our goals, when we are following our heart, life becomes joyous and friendly. What is the simple secret behind that? Why is it that when we align ourselves with the true vision of our heart, the whole world seems to conspire to help us get where we want? It is because the frequencies of our thoughts have changed. Let me briefly explain how it works. Our thoughts are energy. When we send out a thought, it behaves like other energy waves vibrating with a particular frequency, either higher or lower. And that depends on what kind of intention lies behind our thought. It has been observed by researchers that the higher the frequency of vibrations, the higher the impact they have on everything else. In other words, the higher the vibration of our thought, the faster and more profoundly we create our reality, or rather the illusion of it, as we already know from quantum mechanics. That phenomenon has been observed by scientists and also by the ancient masters, mystics and philosophers. It has been also observed that expanded consciousness, altruism and unconditional love are the higher virtues, being of the highest frequency and falling into the category of gamma brainwaves that have the biggest power changing reality in a blink of an eye. Think, for instance, of Mahatma Gandhi and how he had affected many lives with his highly developed consciousness. When we align with the true vision of our heart, our thoughts no longer vibrate with the lower frequencies typical for our ego and our negative subconscious programming. No matter what's on our path, no matter what kind of obstacles, delays or detours, we step ahead with faith and trust that we will get to our destination 
we become the heroes of the day, day after day, powerful, having faith in ourselves and trusting our life. We are no longer dependent on circumstances. Circumstances don't make us. We create the circumstances according to what we believe, think and feel. Such is the power of our thoughts when we are aligned with the true vision of our heart. When we find out what truths are important to our heart, the next step is to look at our life and look at our dreams. Are they in alignment with the vision of our heart or are they the outcome of our subconscious fears and negative programming? Will they help us become who we are meant to be or are they just the desires of our ego, driven by our subconscious insecurities, never satisfied and always looking to gain more of this and more of that? We need to remember that fulfilling the desires of our ego never brings us true happiness. We only experience short-lived victories, which leave us with more and more feelings of disappointment with ourselves and emptiness in life. And that is because, just like any other low-frequency vibrations, ego desires cannot produce anything lasting or leading to true happiness. The only lasting success is always, with no exception, aligned with our purpose and fulfilling our purpose is what brings us true happiness in life. What is built on truth becomes truth. What is built on love becomes love. We also gave you the next step in the game, Nine Pennies Can Change Your Life, a game that can help you change any life situation and achieve what you want. Later in this show, we will give you the next step in that game. Today we will talk about how to stay strong and despite all the stress and difficult circumstances, be able to do what is required so that we could succeed. What does it take to be the hero of the day or sometimes day after day? With no exceptions, all of us can perform under stress and be at our best at any point. We are the heroes. Let's find out how it all works. I also invite you to visit my blog on my official site www.johannakern.com You will find there many helpful articles that can help you overcome stressful situations and create the life you want. During our shows, we talk about such topics in more details. I also answer some of the questions sent to me by listeners and readers in the later part of each show. Thank you for sending all your questions. I won't be able to answer them all, but I usually choose those which best represent the majority of your questions and are related to the show's topic. If you would like to ask me a question and get an answer on air, you can email me at radio at johannakern.com and your identity will not be revealed. After the break, we'll talk about how to find the strength and what to do in stressful or difficult situations. The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. When we are faced with overwhelming tasks or stressful situations, it is important to remember that no matter what, we all are capable of doing what's needed. Yes, we do have the strength. With no exceptions, all of us can perform well under stress and be at our best at any required point. We are the heroes. It is our human nature. As a human race, we have proven that over and over again, 
in various circumstances, we can always find the strength within, look the impossible in the face and say, I don't take no for an answer. We have not been defeated, we survived, and we have an ongoing opportunity to prove how strong, wise, and trustworthy we are. Yes, we can trust ourselves. If only for that one thing, we are survivors and we don't easily back off when we are fighting for what is important or dear to us. If for whatever reason we have forgotten about that, we can simply flash back to our past success and remember that since we did it before, we can do it again. All of us can recall such situations, whether in our private life or at work, when we were faced with the impossible and we made it possible. This is our true nature. Let's have a quick look at that. As human species, we are greatly disadvantaged comparing to other animals. We don't have fair to help us survive in the cold. Our fangs can't really defend us. We can't see or hear as well as other animals. Can't run fast enough. Our offsprings are helpless for years, etc., etc. If we look back at all the climate changes and the disasters on our planet, we need to wonder how on earth have we ever survived? Yes, the first thing that comes to mind is that we knew how to organize teams and support each other for the greater good of us all. But we also need to remember that any team, no matter how small or how large, consists of individuals. And as individuals, we humans are awesome. We are capable of the most beautiful things, and we are capable of becoming heroes in the blink of an eye. Let me share with you some simple steps to becoming the hero of the day whenever that's what we need on our path. Often, what really overwhelms us in situations that require lots of our effort, skills, or strategizing is that we tend to think about the outcome, fearing that it won't be the way we want it. And this is the major cause for how we shoot ourselves in the foot. If you are concentrating on the outcome, your thoughts often trigger your subconscious fear. Whether it is fear of change, fear of failure, fear of inadequacy, fear of being judged, fear of rejection, loss of freedom, fear of success, fear of getting hurt, etc. In other words, all the fears you stored in your subconscious kick in when you are hoping for a certain outcome. What's the remedy for that? Forget the outcome. It will be what it will be. You are living your life. You can design it in any way you want. But there is always some room for surprises or for improvements made by the process of life itself. Instead, concentrate on the task at hand and see it simply as a challenge. Challenge yourself to have fun with the task and do the best you can do, because that is the natural thing. Being the best you can be and doing the best you can do in any given situation is the natural thing to do for human species. Fearing what may or may not be is not natural to us. Such fears have been imprinted in our subconscious. We were never born with them. We were born with our innate joy of life, and until our subconscious has been reprogrammed by our caregivers or our society, belief system, or the spirit of the times we were born in, we had no reason to speculate about such fears. Yes, I know how difficult it is to deal with one's rushing thoughts. Yet, that can be done. Slow down and find a way to distress 
if there is a time for that, before you step forward. Listen to some music for a while. Smell the flowers. Look at a peaceful landscape. Whatever engages your senses in a pleasant way helps you to distress. Breathing deeply is another good technique. Or, if there is no time to slow down, use a very simple technique. When a stressing or negative thought comes to mind, shout out at it in your mind. Stop! Or, put elastic on your wrist and snap it instead. Your brain will quickly learn to associate unwanted thoughts with pain and will avoid them at all cost. It really works like magic. Build your self-esteem. You can do it by repeating useful affirmations and reprogramming your subconscious for positive beliefs about yourself. Remember that all success in life starts from accepting our own worth and letting ourselves have the life we want. We need to let ourselves have it, not dream and wish about it. As long as we keep dreaming about something, there is a gap between ourselves and our dreams. We need to see what we want as a part of our own existence. That's why it is so important to reprogram our subconscious and start believing that we deserve the best in the world. Because we do. All of us deserve what's best in the world. And we need to learn how to claim it for ourselves. Think of your tasks as if you were playing a game. Make it fun for yourself. Be creative. Reach for your childhood memories. Remember how you played? How inventive, passionate and joyous you could be? Try to evoke in yourself that lust for life. Think of your task as if it were an adventure, not a task. Whatever that task may be. There are no limits or rules when it comes to your perception. You decide how you see things. Decide what's best for you in any given situation. Enjoying your life is the key. We don't need to change circumstances to feel happier, but we definitely need to change our perception of the circumstances. And that is how it works. Don't think about things that you have no control over. Don't think about what may happen or not because of them. It isn't important how many people apply for the job you want or if it's going to rain. These are things you can't change. What you have control over is your attitude, your performance, your faith in yourself, and how much effort you want to put in whatever it is you're attempting. Be confident about who you are and don't dwell on what is not who you are. You hold within your entire world. The world outside only mirrors that world. You create it with your thoughts, whether you are aware of it or not. Stop complaining about what you don't want because that way you are creating what you don't want. Remember, what we focus on grows, just as the plant we water grows and blooms. Stop watering the plant you don't want to grow. When you follow these steps, there are no mistakes. You are happy about what you are experiencing and, according to scientists and psychologists, happy people are healthier, both physically and emotionally, live longer and have much more fulfilling lives than the grumpy, complaining and therefore unhappy among us. They are eager to challenge themselves and think outside the box, and so they accomplish much more. Remember that joy of life makes us thirsty for life. Live your life with joy and life will bring you joy. Make joy the blueprint for your life. And yes, it is possible in any circumstances. You have probably noticed that there are people in the world whose happy state of being defies any logic, 
any reasoning we've been used to, those people remain happy no matter what the circumstances. Some of them are poor, uneducated, and even illiterate. Some of them lead regular lives, have regular jobs, and deal with similar problems as the rest of our society. Some are richer, perhaps famous. Some are truly well off. Some of them may be chronically ill or starving as we speak somewhere in the depths of Africa. No matter what their background and no matter what their circumstances, those people have one thing in common. Happiness. It seems to be their natural state of being. We often think of such people as the lucky ones. We tend to say that they were just born that way. But the good news is that you too were born that way, remember? However, it is important to wake up to life. Being born to it is only the beginning. Whether you reach for the stars, apply for a new job, or climb a mountain, good thing to ask yourself is, what is the worst case scenario? Once you answer that question, you will know that there isn't any worst case scenario that could scare you away. We don't tend to reach for things that are not in our reach. We usually attempt at things that are either in alignment with our talents, skills, knowledge, or expertise. Unless, of course, we are delusional about whom we are. But that is entirely another topic, isn't it? So once you play it in your head, the worst-case scenario, throw it out of your mind instantly and focus on the task at hand, right here, right now, in the present. Focus on what you are doing and stay with it. The simple rule is stay in the present and enjoy the challenge. No matter what is happening, it's simply an experience that you have decided to have. And again, the more fun you have with it, the more fun you get from it. As simple as that. Remind yourself that this is just another opportunity, one of many opportunities, as a matter of fact. If this one doesn't work, there always will be more. Life is a stream of opportunities. Each of them is just an experience through which we learn who we are and let ourselves become who we want to become. There is no just one opportunity of a lifetime. Every opportunity can be such an opportunity for you. And if you miss on some, you will find more of them at every corner, if you know how to look for them. We talked about how to recognize a truly good opportunity for us in our previous shows. Please go to our archives on my official site and find the topics that interest you. Or visit my blog on my official site. You'll find there a lot of articles on various topics. Open your heart. Look inside to find out what you truly want and need to bring to the world. Then go for it. You are the opportunity of your lifetime. The one and only that counts and is for real. Everything else can be repeated, duplicated or dismissed. Not you. You are unique and your life journey is unique. Don't look outside to find your strength because you can find it only inside. And once you find it, nothing is impossible for you. I would like you to relax now and repeat after me a very useful affirmation. We have been repeating this affirmation for the past weeks, and that's because repetition of such positive statements lets us affect our subconscious in a positive way. It is also important to take opportunity of an appropriate environment and timing. And our shows provide such positive environment and timing for our subconscious to accept the positive messages. 
The affirmation comes from my book 365 plus 1 Affirmations to Create a Great Life and goes as follows. I let go of my worries. I know life will support me if I fully embrace my own worth. I am a unique human being, one in billions, with my own story to tell in this life. I let my story unfold without fear of the future. I trust my own process. I trust that all is happening for my best. Wonderful! Well done! We will repeat this affirmation again at the end of our show during our usual short relaxation routine. As usual, I will be guiding you in this relaxation to help you in the process of reprogramming your subconscious. In our shows, we talk about how to live the life we want and I always give you more useful tips to change what you need to change and to build and achieve what you want. After the break, I will answer some of your questions. The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. Lily wrote, I want to start my own business. I'd like to create some healthy products that could be used for natural body care, like soaps, lotions, facial creams, etc. But at this point, I have no direction. I think I'm very idealistic, yet realistic about it. My friend, a businessman, gave me some advice on doing one thing and focusing on that. I made some notes for what this one thing could be, but that's it. This is where I'm at. I definitely need some direction. Also, I'm not sure if I have enough guts to follow my idea. Where do you think I should start? Let me tell you, Lily, that you've already accomplished a lot. You know what you want to do, and you know your own heart. It is also good that you seek advice from a businessman, and I believe he is right. Start with one product. It will be easier for you to target your clients and promote your product in an appropriate way, giving it most of your time and energy. As for the next step, let me share with you some very simple method for setting and achieving goals. To begin with, brainstorm. Once you found out in your heart what it is that you want to accomplish, try to come up with some plan that will include your short-term and long-term goals. This should let you accomplish your aspirations step by step. However small, each step brings you closer to your goal. Success is built with many small steps. You need to be specific and make your actions measurable. Two broad concepts usually bring two broad strategies, in the end leading nowhere. Make each step count, not letting your efforts dissolve in many unnecessary moves in various directions, or you'll be walking in a very amusing but not really productive way. Also, when you divide your plan into smaller steps, it will be much easier for you to move forward and measure your progress. And of course, you need to focus on the task at hand. Give it your full attention, not on your final goal. Otherwise, you'll cut your finger while cutting your veggies. Concentrate and you'll be effective in whatever you do. Make sure that you can measure your progress in a concrete and rational way. It doesn't matter what you imagine at this point, 
it does matter that you will be able to clearly see that you are making progress. That will not only build your confidence, but also give you more enthusiasm for the next step. It is important to acknowledge and praise yourself after achieving each step. Again, your confidence will grow and so will grow your joy. And that joy will make your efforts easier and more pleasurable. You can't lose with that. Joy is what we are after most of the time, whether at work or play. Be realistic about your goals. Don't try to become an opera singer if your skills are not in that field. Success in life needs to be built on your own personal, so-called in some philosophies, dharma. That is the unique purpose you have in the world. Your true skills, potential and talents need to come to fruition, not your desires to be who you are not. I believe you've done some research about the products you want to make and perhaps you even already have some old or new family recipes. Be realistic about the timing for achieving your goal. Do some research so that you could be prepared for how long it might take. However, remember that each goal is different. Don't let yourself procrastinate when timing is of importance. And don't rush when things need to take time. It is very important to give yourself enough time and to know when to operate quickly. Hold yourself accountable for your progress. When you say you'll do something, do it. If you don't keep your own word, you lose trust in yourself. Don't let that happen. You need to rely on yourself. And without trusting yourself, you won't be able to accomplish much. Get your support from your family or friends. It is important to have someone in life who will believe in you and celebrate with you your accomplishments. If you don't have anyone like that in life, become your own supporter. Celebrate on your own in any way you want. But do celebrate. It's your life you are celebrating after all. Also, it will be good for you to educate yourself and learn even more about the field you are stepping into. Natural beauty products are very popular. There is a great demand for them. I'm sure you can bring something very valuable to that market. Make it unique and find out what is sought after. Know your competitors and find out how you can excel, how you can make your product truly desirable. What qualities of your product would make it really good? Also, you may want to play our game, Nine Pennies Can Change Your Life. It helped many people to focus and step by step achieve their goals. Good luck, Lily. I'm sure you will do very well. The life you want is yours with Johanna Kern. This is a question from Bob. I am a new teacher and I must say that college does not prepare you for all the challenges that arise. I am lucky I became a teacher later in life. It was my dream job, but for family reasons, I couldn't reach for it earlier. I'm a sixth grade teacher. I remind myself I am there for the kids. When I have to jump through hoops like meetings, the parents fighting, other teachers' personality conflicts, and lack of support from the school principal. The list goes on. I am becoming more and more discouraged. My fear is that I'll become bitter and disappointed like some of the teachers I've met and know. I still love my job, but I don't know if I can manage in the long run with all the problems and negativity. What can I do? Whatever you do, Bob, don't ever give up. If you do so, you will regret that. 
What you are dealing with is another difficult situation in your life. Not the first one and not the last one. You need to release the negative emotions and not get stuck with them. Otherwise, you'll put yourself in a perpetuum mobile, complaining, blaming, regretting, and not believing in yourself cycle. Focus on how you can progress through this experience. There is a deep life wisdom in every difficult situation to be learned if we want to find it instead of being overwhelmed by that situation or giving up. You can learn your own strengths. You can learn how smart, how forgiving, how kind you can be in your dealings with other people. Or simply, you will learn what not to do or what to do. It is important to value every single experience that we have. Assess the problem for what it is. And not according to what your fears tell you. You are fearing that your dream job may not be what you wanted or that you will fail at it. You may also fear success. You might not believe in yourself. You might not truly believe that you are a great teacher. Assess the problem for what it is. Don't listen to your fears. It is simply a difficult situation and perhaps you will find out that it isn't really as bad as you think. Look at it from a distance. It will be easier for you to take the next step. Ask yourself what you can do in the meantime to let yourself be positive about your job. You love your job. You love working with kids. Why the first difficult situation should defeat you and stop you from living the life you want? I also understand how difficult it is to proceed with our tasks, with our goals, when we are surrounded by negative people. When you speak with the other teachers or parents that may be sometimes angry, complaining, and negative in any way, switch topics. Don't engage in their negativity. Nod or give simple replies. And each time they say something positive, reply enthusiastically. If you do it often, they might soon be more positive in their communication. Notice that whenever they criticize anybody or anything, they probably mean no harm, but they are simply caught in their negativity. Don't let it get to you. It's not about you. Negative people usually are that way because they feel they lack warmth and love in their own life. Often, they protect themselves from the world with their negativity. And if you want to help them, think about what's bothering them and decide if there is anything you perhaps can do for them. Be sincere and show them the upsides in life. However, when they dwell on topics that trigger their negativity, switch to lighter topics, such as new songs, movies, or hobbies. Anything that they may feel more positive about. Notice, though, that you should avoid topics such as weather or shopping, because those topics can easily trigger their negativity. Be mindful of how much time you spend with them. Their negativity will have an effect on your own well-being and, unfortunately, that's the truth. Set a limit to how long your interaction with them will be and don't go over that time. Focus on your purpose. You wanted to be a teacher and you have become one. Now, You have a teacher's work to do. Your kids need you. You love your job and you love the kids. Decide whether you want to stay where you are or look for another school. No matter what you decide, do it from your heart. The same way you've chosen your profession. Despite delays in your life, despite obstacles you had to overcome, you have reached your goal. 
You have proven to yourself that you can do it. Yes, you are the hero of the day, Bob. Remind that yourself every day. Decide your next step and make it. You can do it, I'm sure. I'm keeping my fingers crossed for you. I believe in you. You are a wonderful teacher. Continue to be one. The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. And now it's time for the next step in our game. Nine pennies can change your life. Step 7. Put one IP in your BLA, that is, put one investment penny in your Better Life account. For those of you who don't know what we are talking about, please go to the description of the game on my blog, on my official site. In this step, you learn empowering thoughts that give you extra strength, physical, mental or emotional, when you need it in crucial situations, there will be moments at any point of your journey when you will be required to make an extra effort despite your exhaustion. It is important to remember that no matter what, we are capable of doing what's needed. We have the strength. With no exceptions, all of us can perform under stress and be at our best at any point. We are the heroes. Time limit? None. Some tasks take longer than others. You can definitely do it, no matter how long it takes. And you can move to step 8 of the game in one week after our next show. Reference? In our story, the younger brother climbed up the steep hill, although he was very tired. He didn't give up, found his strength, and got closer to his goal. Know that you have the power. You can do it, no matter what it is. Have fun with it. Don't worry if you don't remember the story in the game or how to do the seventh step. Simply go to my official website www.johannakern.com and find the Nine Pennies Can Change Your Life game on my blog. We are adding there the next steps in the game after each show. The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. It's time for our usual short relaxation, in which I will be guiding you now to repeat some affirmations to help you to reprogram your subconscious and deal with your subconscious fears. The affirmations come from my book 365 plus 1 Affirmations to Create a Great Life. The book contains a step-by-step -step program which I designed based on many years of experience in counseling people to help them achieve what they wanted the most. It is very important to deal with our subconscious programming while we are changing our thoughts to be more positive so that we could create the life we want. And now, please relax and listen to the following. Find a comfortable position, sitting or lying down. Close your eyes and let your arms rest alongside your body. Good. Now take a deep breath and slowly let it out. Take another deep breath and again slowly let it out. Then, while taking in the next breath, let it fill you up from toes to head and add an image to it, a pleasant dim light 
glowing everywhere inside you. Keep breathing and observing the light inside from the count of 10 to 1. 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 Relax and let the dim light inside shine in every single cell in your body. Good. In order to reprogram your subconscious for the life you want, you need to learn how to replace your negative thinking with positive thoughts. Your life is not your enemy. Your life is your loyal friend. Acknowledge it. Appreciate it. You are worth living the most wonderful life. Repeat after me in your mind. I let go of my worries. I know life will support me. If I fully embrace my own worth. I am a unique human being. One in billions with my own story to tell in this life. I let my story unfold without fear of the future. I trust my own process. I trust that all is happening for my best. Good. Well done. Remember, the life you want on the subconscious level is already yours. And now you will learn how to access it so that you can start living it in your day-to-day -day reality. You have learned a lot from your past and now you can be free from it any hardship you have experienced has only made you stronger, wiser, and more compassionate. Repeat in your mind, I will treasure what I have learned through suffering and struggling as a good lesson about who I am. I know that I am powerful. I know that I can trust and respect myself. I completely release my past and live in the now. Well done. You can move forward now in your life. The life you want can be yours. Make it your reality. Enjoy it and love it. You are a powerful creator and you will get what you want and live the life you want. Now you can open your eyes at the count of one to five. One, two, three, Four, five, open your eyes. Excellent, you've done very well. You are fully relaxed, yet energized and happy to continue with your day.
Thank you for participating. In our next show, we will talk more about what we can do to live the life we want, how to overcome our fears or obstacles. As usual, I will also respond to more of your questions without revealing your name. Please send me an email to this address, radio at johannakern.com. Have a wonderful time. Till we meet again. Have a good one. See you next week. The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern.